Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome back to 300 Seconds of Science, and today we're talking about... Hey, uh, um, can I get a drummer real quick? Thanks. We're talking about the coolest, the raddest, the baddest, and most ironcladdest bunch you've never seen because they're all dead. Yes! Yes! It's time to rock back the ro roll. It's time to roll, roll back the rock to the dawn of time when Earth was smoking. It's time to roll back the rock and swing back the clock because we're talking about the dinosaurs. Throughout the age of the dinosaurs, there were numerous mass extinction events left and right. We're talking doomsdays every several million years. At the end of the Paleozoic era, mass extinction. Triassic period, mass extinction. The Jurassic period, well, they all lived happily ever after. Just kidding, mass extinction. So why is it that you don't see any dinosaurs today? Why can't I ride to school on the back of a sauropod or have a cool dinosaur baby brother? Gotta love me, come on, gotta love me. Dinosaurs existed for roughly 165 million years. That's a long time. So for them to all just disappear, things must have been pretty bad, right? Hi, how you doing, how you doing? How you so how are we so sure that dinosaurs died off around 65 million years ago? Well, when investigating, paleontologists discovered a consistent layer of fossilized remains within caves, mines, and cliff sides, not in just one location. I'm talking about the whole world. With the help of radiometric dating, it became pretty apparent as to when there was this massive layer of death. There was another layer, a layer of nothing. Scientists like to call this layer of rock the Cretaceous Paleogene Boundary. Up until recently, scientists really didn't know what had occurred to create such a massive extinction event. But in 1979, scientists discovered a clue in the Cretaceous Paleogene boundary, a high concentration of an element called iridium. Such quantities of this stuff is extremely rare on Earth and usually come from outer space. Scientists concluded that around 65 million years ago, an asteroid or a comet must have had a cataclysmic impact with the Earth. In fact, there was so much iridium caked within the Cretaceous Paleogene layer, scientists concluded that the the asteroid must have been around 10 kilometers across or 6.2 miles in diameter. You know the tropical paradise of Bora Bora, right? Five star resorts, bungalows, beautiful beachfront. Well, imagine that entire island flying at you at immense speeds and then boom! boom. Hey. The impact of this object hitting the Earth was so devastating that it created a crater that is 180 kilometers across or 110 miles. So how hard is it to find such a crater of this magnitude? Well, not until 1978 when it was finally discovered by geophysicists who happened to stumble across it when doing research in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. The crater was named Chicxulub after the nearby town. The actual impact itself was so devastating that it created a fireball that was equivalent to 10 million atom bombs. The shockwave alone would have obliterated all life 100 miles around from where the impact happened. A 2017 research project done in the Gulf of Mexico recovered a bunch of gypsum rocks from the Gulf's floor. When gypsum rock is vaporized under extreme heat and pressure, it creates sulfur, which helps scientists confirm that colossal volumes of sulfur were in fact injected into the Earth's atmosphere right after the impact, creating a global winter period that followed the immediate firestorm. Early calculations in the 1980s showed that so much sulfuric dust entered the high atmosphere that the Earth was shrouded in a massive layer of dust that blocked sunlight for several weeks to months. This alone killed a majority of the vegetation on Earth, which would have disrupted the food chain for herbivores, and when they all died, the carnivores, such as Tyrannosaurus rex, would have soon followed. If the asteroid struck, say, a few moments earlier or later, rather than hitting the shallow coastal waters, it would have hit deep ocean waters, which would have drastically reduced the impact of the asteroid. So what's the takeaway with this story? If a 10 mile wide asteroid is going to hit our planet, don't let it hit Mexico. Speaking of asteroids hitting things, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. My name is Christian Locke, and that was 300 Seconds of Science. So go out, enjoy life, and stay curious.
This program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. Do you want to gain experience in video production, professional social media, or working with real clients? Visit the UA School of Communications online or follow us on social media to learn more. ZTV. Make media. Make a difference.